Hi there friends, thanks for stopping by Dishing Out. If you're new here, if this is your first time, please take a moment and click that subscribe button. I promise we'll make it worth your while. The holiday season is hard to believe, rapidly hurtling towards us. And while gatherings and engagements this holiday season may be a little different, be it outdoors or socially distant or just smaller in capacity, it's safe to say that many of us probably will be gathering with family and friends to celebrate the coming holidays. And if you want to be the life of that party, whether you're hosting it or traveling to it, make a charcuterie board. Remember in elementary school when you opened up your lunchbox to find pizza lunchables? Yeah, that was amazing, right? Charcuterie is like that, but even better. Plus you can have cocktails. While it doesn't require any cooking, it does require a little thought and planning. You want to make sure that your board has tastes and textures that will tickle every inch of your tongue. So. Let's get to it, shall we? Here's what we will need for our charcuterie board. We've got some briny elements, some meaty elements, some sweet and fruity elements, cheesy elements, and of course, some crunchy elements. Now we need to decide what kind of a board we're gonna put this on. We could use a small tray for a small gathering, uh, a larger one for more people, but um, I'm thinking that maybe there's something else we could use. Oh yeah, this beautiful ingrain cutting board. So first, we're gonna start off with our meats. I've got some soppressata here, which is kind of like a grown-up pepperoni. It's a relatively firm, spicy sausage. I'm just gonna get that down in one corner of our board. And we wanna think about how this is gonna look as well, so I'm gonna kinda of spread it out to make it a little bit more visually appealing. Next up, we're going with a medium firmness meat. Um, you wanna, again, vary your textures. So this is some Genoa salami that I'm gonna roll up here to kind of add some height to the board. The final meat that we will be using is very traditional. It is none other than prosciutto di Parma, which is uh, just ham that comes from the Parma region in Italy. It is very, very thin, generally speaking, very tasty and relatively expensive as well. So you don't need too much of it to really make an impact. Next, our cheeses. Again, we're using varying flavors and textures. So first off, a relatively mild uh, Gruyere or Swiss cheese here that I'm just gonna shingle in that lower corner there. We wanna kinda make sure there's elements of meat and cheese and everything on different corners of the board so that it's, again, visually appealing. Next, a blue cheese. So this is on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's gonna have a very strong and pungent flavor. And finally, good old Vermont cheddar. It's been aged so that it has a little bit of a tang, but is a nice medium between the blue cheese and the Gruyere. So I'm gonna cut this into relatively bite-sized pieces and stack those up in a nice little uh, Jenga looking uh, cheese display back there. Now, some of our additional elements. I've got some honey, which I'm going to squeeze down into a little bowl, and I'll just put a little spoon beside that so folks can get at it as they wish some grapes in different corners of the board here to kind of fill it out. And now we need some other elements here. We're going with some very briny black olives, some salty almonds, and some crackers just to serve all of this up. You want people to be able to pick and choose different flavors, cheeses and meats, and kind of see what they like and what they enjoy best. I'm gonna put a little rosemary down there for garnish and almost forgot a little bit of pickle to cleanse the palate. This board looks great to me, so I think we're all done here. Oh wait, I promised you a cocktail. For that, I'm gonna have to turn you over to the cocktail smee. So you want a cocktail that can stand up to the decadence of a charcuterie board. The first drink that comes to my mind is a Manhattan. It's elegant, easy to make, and pairs beautifully with the rich and varied flavors of those meats and cheeses. For this drink, we'll only need three ingredients, all of which are easy to find. Whiskey, sweet vermouth, and aromatic bitters. For garnish, we'll use a maraschino cherry, the real kind, of course. The equipment we'll need is a mixing glass, a jigger, a bar spoon, and a strainer. If you're getting into making drinks and want to build out your home bar, these four items are a must. To build this drink, I'm using a large block of ice in my mixing glass. The drink is served up, that is, no ice in its final form. The large ice helps get the drink very cold without over diluting it. The ratio for the Manhattan is easy to remember because it's one of the area codes of Manhattan, New York, 212. 
I'm using two ounces of bourbon, and you could use rye here if you prefer. One ounce of sweet vermouth, which is a type of fortified wine. And two dashes of Angostura aromatic bitters. Bitters really ramp up the aroma of the drink and help round out the depth of flavor. Now using the bar spoon, I'm gonna stir this. Now that I've stirred for a while to chill the drink, I'll strain it into a coupe glass to serve. The last piece of the cocktail is the maraschino cherry. The real ones are worth the cost and they are life changing. Drop one in the drink. Ready to serve your Manhattan. Cheers. Cheers to you too, dishing out cocktails to me. Have a spooktacular weekend, happy Halloween, and don't go too crazy because you need to get back here next Monday so we can make something delicious. <laughs>